up, you guys? This is Rob from The Gay Guy Plays, and today on The Snapshot, it's all about watching where you bust, I mean, burst, when we take a look at the Corrin. Now, you can pick up the Corrin's blueprints in the market for 25,000 credits, just to be aware it does require a Mastery Rank 10 to craft. However, if you don't have any spare night team hanging around, you can always pick it up in the market pre-built along with the weapon slot and catalyst for 240 plat. So the Corinth is a pump action shotgun with two unique fire modes. Its primary mode fires off a buckshot which is primarily puncture based but has a fairly balanced IPS spread. Now, while its status is severely lacking at only 12%, it currently features both the highest base critical chance and critical multiplier in its category, sitting at 30% and a 28 times multiplier respectively. In addition, it uses the same individual reload system that the Strun Wraith does, allowing those who manually reload during downtime to benefit from a discounted reload speed when not refilling an entire clip. Now, as for its secondary, this fires off a projectile that explodes in about a 5 to 10 meter radius once it's traveled 20 meters, knocking down all enemies caught in the blast. This shot also features a fairly high status chance 28% at its base, but it does suffer a fairly big hit to its critical stats, dropping down to a 4% chance with only a 1.6 times multiplier. Also keep in mind that if the projectile does not travel the full 20 meters by coming in contact with terrain or striking an enemy unit, it will fail to explode, so be sure to aim this carefully. Now as for the build, and this is going to sound very very strange, but this is not necessarily the build that I'm planning on using with this weapon, and I don't know if it's necessarily the doomsday prepper in me, but I did kind of want to put this one out there just in case damage 2.5 hurts a lot. Um, so as you can see here, we have focused on a lot of the critical mods because this thing's just got a lot of crit on it. You know, kind of win where you can win. And then of course we've got in some corrosive to try to strip off some armor. Vigilante armaments, of course, coming through with extra multi-shot. And that's kind of the position that we're going to be taking with this build. However, it does not benefit from the glory and beauty of Hunter's Munitions. So let's just go ahead and see how this performs. It's not going to be as great as the other variation that I'm actually planning on running, but I did want to show you a potential future for what this weapon could be like. <laughs> Alright, so I am forewarning you guys are real fast. This is not necessarily the greatest build in the, you know, the mankind of this build. But I just I just kind of feel like I wanted to, you know, kind of show off what happens when you don't necessarily have the extra oomph from the status. We've got we've got one status in there. We've got a little bit of slash in there, but you can see it definitely does struggle a bit because its status chance is... I'm not going to say it's low, it's just not great at what it is, you know what I mean? We're not stripping off armor very quickly, we're not applying a ton of slash procs, it's just honestly kind of meh, um, but you know, I, I guess I kind of wanted to offer you guys a, a potential reality of what this weapon could be like without something um, as strong as Hunter's Munitions kind of behind it. But I did want to give you a little bit of a heads up. I think that I think that Hunter's Munitions is still going to be okay with this. Uh, but while we're here, you can kind of see all of the reload stuff that goes along with it. And then just kind of go for some headshots as he's getting down. Uh, because that's really all we kind of got right now. That's really, that's really all we've got to try to kind of like make the most of <laughs> this weapon. Um, at least we can get some hits in while he's standing up. It's it's not terrible, and of course, like I said, you know, we're not always going to be fighting 155s all the gosh darn time, so this isn't really necessarily a gauge of how this weapon would perform in a more realistic scenario, but I know y'all got some power fantasy, so let's go ahead and jump into that power fantasy right. Okay, so this is how I actually am planning on running this weapon, and if I'm going to be completely honest with you, one of the things that I mentioned in the scripted portion was the fact that it does have a fairly balanced IPS spread. It's not completely balanced, but Slash is still fairly high up there, and a part of me feels like you might still be able to take advantage of that when it comes to Hunter's Munitions after damage 2.5. So as you can see, we've got all of the critical stuff in here. We have swapped it out, of course, for a little bit of Viral, because Viral always helps when it comes to these Slash-based weapons. And then we've tossed in Hunter's Munition, because of the fact that we have such a high chance to crit, this is going to work fairly well with um, this weapon, and trust me. Right now, I almost, I almost feel like, okay, when we get 2.5, this will feel more balanced, but right now this definitely kicks a good chunk of ass. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So you remember earlier when we were having like issues when, you know, these guys were really difficult to take down. I'm just, just not even going to fire the entire clip at him. Um, so clearly a part of me is like, God damn it, this weapon is just too perfect with Hunter's Munitions. And maybe that's the key phrase there, that it's too perfect with Hunter's Munitions. I mean, the slash damage is going to be reduced by about a third, 
Um, but because of the fact that we crit so often, it's gonna stack up super, super nicely. I mean, that that's gotta hurt. That's that's gotta hurt level 155s. And I mean, if we can take down 155s uh, fairly easy uh, with this weapon, a part of me is kind of like, okay, you know, maybe maybe with Hunter's munitions. Is it me or did he get up really fast? I felt like he got up super fast, right? Um, so that's kind of like its current state in Hunter's Munitions. You know, I think that it'll be a little bit more balanced. I don't think it's going to be as crazy OP as it is right now with that Hunter's Munitions in there. Um, but it's still going to be doing, even if it is just, you know, 30% of the base damage in there. Because, you know, I feel like it's like a third. It's I, I think that it's still going to be pretty, pretty fucking powerful, right? I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, actually, I know what I think, so that's all that matters. <laughs> Regardless, I think that damage 2.5 is going to be um, a little bit of a nerf to it, but I feel like it'll be like a balanced nerf. So I don't necessarily think it's going to be completely terrible. So one last thing that I did want to point out because I completely forgot to kind of share it is I wanted to show you how the secondary fire reacts. So as you can see here, um, as long as it travels the 20 meters, it'll knock down the enemies. It's completely fine, and it'll apply status too, as you can see here. However, if we actually connect with the target itself, um, it'll you know it'll still apply the status. But as you can see right here, it's it's only going to hit them with a little bit of impact damage. It's not even going to be as much as a normal shot, and it's not going to do the AOE explosion. Same thing goes for if you shoot it off the wall. So let's say I shoot it on the ground, no explosion. Even if, like, let's say the projectile, like, travels 20 more meters, you really need to make sure that you're aiming it above the heads. That's one of the big things. You know when they say air blast? They mean air blast. Just blast the air, baby. Just blast the air. If you're thinking that, oh my god, it's going to collide with that terrain, just blast a little bit higher. You've got some good radius on it right there. So, um, that's kind of, one of the, it, I feel like this weapon has a little bit of skill testingness to it, right? It, it's like saying, okay, you need to be sure how to gauge 20 meters, because if you don't, you get nothing, right? You get, it just, like, plops onto the ground, like, like a little, you know, when you have that, uh, come, when you don't have the come shot, but you have, like, the come dribble, that's how it is, or when you come in contact with an enemy and it just kind of, like, smacks them, but doesn't necessarily do anything spectacular. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you are playing around with the secondary shot. Make sure that you're firing off into the air or into open areas, even if you kind of just like gauge it off to the side, because that's the only way that the explosion is going to happen. So definitely a little bit of a tip there for you. So all in all, the Corinth in its current state is pretty fucking badass. And I say current state because we really don't know how things are going to be after damage 2.5. And I'm just being realistic with the whole situation. I still think even though it's incredible now, I think it'll still be good after damage 2.5. Maybe swapping out the blaze for a little bit more slash damage. There's a lot, there's going to be a lot of playing around when it comes to builds after those changes do hit. However, as it stands, a lot of fun. It is skill testing because one of the things like I was pointing out is making sure you aim the secondary right and also the manual reload thing. That's one of the things that a lot of people don't really get into the habit of doing. Sometimes people just, you know, go through their whole clip and don't even try to reload during downtimes. But because of the fact that you're rewarded for reloading on your downtime, it's kind of like another one of those skill testing things where it's like, say, we'll give you a little bit extra will give you a little bit extra if you do happen to manage to, you know, time everything up correctly. Uh, the only thing that I do want to say that I don't feel was really represented all that well in this testing is the fact that that blast explosion does really well in the star chart. I mean, I'm putting that out there right now. You know, when I was leveling it up, um, the secondary blast on that, if you're just using it on, you know, standard star chart foes, can clear out entire groups. So it's pretty rewarding to kind of uh, really be able to aim these appropriately and make sure that you put them in places where it can explode as opposed to uh, places where it's just going to bounce off an enemy. You know, it's something that you need to be cognizant of. And I kind of like that little skill testing feature in the weapon itself. Now, would I, would I be okay if they made it easier and it just explodes on contact? Yes, that would be nice too, because sometimes we want to turn our brains off. But regardless, those are the facts and figures for you guys. Um, let me know how you guys feel about the Corinth in the comments below. But if you want to see how this performs in just normal standard star chart, not testing the simulacrum stuff, stay tuned for the gameplay coming up next. All right, so one of the things that I definitely want to display to you guys is how this kind of works on um, just star chart stuff, to be completely honest with you, because there's there's a lot, oh, see? It just it just does a nice job of just wiping, oh, see, it's good. 
No, 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 bitch. No, nah, bitch. Wait, hold on. No, nah, bitch. No, nah, please don't. Um, this is one of those things that... Ah, he's gonna jump at me. Where are ya? This is one of those things where I definitely wanted to kind of... Um, you know, talk about how how it differs a little bit from the star chart to the actual, you know, to the actual testing itself. Because the testing kind of like shows off one thing, while um, the actual in-game playtesting shows another thing. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm playing like an idiot right now. Um, but no, it's definitely one of those things where it's kind of like there's definitely a difference in the way that it performs when it's being tested against, you know, level 150s and when it's actually coming down to, you know, just standard gameplay. And in standard gameplay, there's actually a lot of fun that goes, uh, that goes along with it. And it's one of those sad things that doesn't really translate because a lot of people, I, I don't want to say that they don't care, but you know, when they think of Star Trek stuff, they're like, oh, that's beneath me. That's not worth testing for. And I'm like, legit though, we consistently play the star chart. I mean, I think that about 90% of the population plays mainly the star chart and not necessarily, you know, um, not necessarily, you know, the crazy ridiculous extended runs, you know? We just kind of like play for fun, we do our farming, we do our fissures, all of that kind of stuff. And um, I think a lot of people forget that. Like, look at that, an 8k hit, not even a crit, you know? And we're, we're, we're making some magic here, you know? This is one of those things that just makes me really, really happy because, um, you know, you can actually have fun with some of these builds. It's not necessarily about always having, um, always building for level 155s, right? And I, I kind of feel like maybe that's, you know, also partially my fault because, you know, on the channel, I'm constantly testing against, um, I'm constantly testing against 155s when that's really... You know, realistically, that's not what everybody plays all the time. And I think that if if you say that you do, you're a liar because literally um, there is no mission, aside from like the once a day sorties, there is no mission that starts at uh, at level, you know, 100 or, or around that level, right? You have to ramp up to that level. So all of the time that it takes you to ramp up to that level is usually greater than the time that you spend in those levels. So I don't know. I think that it's a big bag of bullshit sometimes um, to test, you know, at super, super high levels. But at the same time, you know, I, I fall into that fallacy where everybody is like, well, you know, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't test at that high level, nobody's going to take you seriously. And that's kind of, that's kind of the shitty part, you know, is because I know that a lot of my viewers don't play 150s. They don't play 200s. You know, for a majority of the time, they play within the star chart, and maybe we should test within the star chart. But, I don't know, realistically, when it comes to YouTube stuff, you know, people are always trying to measure everybody's dicks and shit. And I'm like, God, you're killing the fun. And I'm going to be honest with you, the fucking secondary on this, uh, the secondary shot on this is super, super fun. You get rewarded with these massive explosions, you know, in the air, taking out large groups of enemies in the star chart. And it's almost kind of become one of those, like, uh... Um, one of those taboo terms like, oh, you can't talk about, like, playing in the star chart. You can't talk about, you know, in the star chart stuff because legitimately, is a stalker, die. Um, you, te you can't talk about playing in the star chart because that's noob stuff. I'm like, bitch, we all do it all the time, so maybe you should calm the hell down. But as you guys can see from here, the secondary performs extremely well. Um, in Star Chart missions, it, the primary, like, performs extremely well in Star Chart missions, and not even having to use Hunter's Munitions. Hunter's Munitions is really kind of like the higher-end build for it, right? It's like, if you're gonna go into those 150-plus situations, that Corrosive build would work just fine throughout the Star Chart. And so, even though I made faces at that Corrosive build and saying, that's not what I would actually use. Legitimately, it's not gonna be bad for the thing that people use for 90% of the stuff out there. So, you know, so, you know, I do pardon me for the fact that yes, I do test against super high level stuff uh, because I feel like it's necessary to, I guess you would say, keep my reputation and make sure that I was, oh yeah, he knows what he's talking about when you're talking about like late game stuff, all that. Um, but regardless, let me know how you guys feel about the Corinth, if you guys have been able to play with it yet. Are you guys enjoying that secondary shot in the star chart like I am? Um, so toss all of that in the comments below, and as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye